love for character designs needs no introduction at this point, so I'ma just jump to explaining what I'm doing today. So I thought it'd be fun to look at all of Team Ruby's main designs across the years to compare them and see how they've developed over the years. So that's what I'm doing. It's not gonna be like a top 10, but rather I'll be making a tier list for this video. And at the end I'll also do some math to figure out each girl's average tier ranking because I think that shit's fun to see. Of course it bears mentioning that this is just my opinion, so don't throw a fit if you find yourself disagreeing with my rankings. Things to note for this video include the fact that I'll be looking at supplemental material today too, not just the designs in the show. Cause I think the supplemental stuff is often significantly better than the girls' canon designs. Also, we're only looking at their proper combat gear. Pajamas and the dance dresses aren't gonna get looked at. And in that same vein, none of the Amity Arena designs are gonna make the list because they're all gag designs intended for beach parties or holidays. I'm sure I'll make a video about those eventually. Another thing to note is that I'll be considering drastic changes to a design a whole new look. For example, Blake losing her coat at the end of Volume 6 is a big change that totally alters her colors and silhouette, creating a whole new design. In contrast, Weiss's Volume 5 look has a long dress variant and sometimes she wears a scarf, but those are temporary and minor alterations that don't warrant being a separate design on the list. And the final thing of note is that sometimes the in-show models have totally different colors than the concept art, which isn't how that shit's supposed to work, by the way. The concept art exists for a reason, you're supposed to replicate it in the show, not use it as a loose guide. For those models that end up significantly different from the artwork, they'll be listed as separate designs as well. Now, with all the caveats out of the way, let's start. We'll be looking at one girl at a time and going chronologically down their looks, starting with Ruby. By this point, it's no secret that I find Ruby's original look one of the best in the show. I've gushed about the smart placement of colors, use of silhouette, and overall iconic feel that makes Ruby stand out in the greatest way possible. I do think it's a shame that volumes 2 and 3 end up darkening the reds a lot, but it's not really different enough to call the designs distinct. There's a reason why this design persists in fan-made content long after its time on the show. It's damn near perfect and easily makes it into the S tier. Ruby's Slayer outfit bums me out a bit because for some reason this is the look that seemed to inspire the rest of her designs in the show moving forward, despite her original look being just so much better. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, it's not bad. I like the darker leggings, the rose pattern on her skirt is cool, and this over shirt thing is cute, if a bit confusing in terms of design. Like, why are the pieces laced together? <laughs> but the silhouette's a lot less dynamic, with the skirt being smaller, and her hood bundled around her head looks awkward and ends up hiding her face at points. The most glaring problem is that this gray shirt just doesn't coexist with her equally pale skin and doesn't even jive with the rest of the outfit that well either. She's also got a small armor thing on only one shoulder, and that's pretty dumb looking. Overall, it's a lot messier and noisier than her main outfit. Again, not bad, but I think the design team should have caught on to how much this look isn't working as well as her all-black look. B tier. So, I've expressed my love for Shiro's art and especially these designs before, and wow, what a surprise, I still love them. I'm not gonna beat around the bush here, Shiro's design for Ruby is my favorite version of her. She's wearing a similar overall situation as she was in her Slayer outfit, but by keeping her shirt a dark grey, it alleviates the problems her previous look had had with looking out of place in her designs. I will say there is a version where Shiro did color it with a lighter grey, he tends to be pretty fast and loose with colors at times, and in this iteration, it loses is just as much impact as her volume 2 design had. I think he only did this to help her arms stand out from the background, as the starker version is the one we see consistently in the manga and on its cover, so we'll just ignore this alt version. But yeah, this is basically just an altered version of Ruby's original look. Tighter sleeves and red gloves does the same good color placement, emphasizing her hands, but looks more mature than her larger sleeves. The corset is more complicated without becoming noisy. It ends up implying that Ruby's better prepared with it looking to be leather rather than the silk or whatever the original corset was made of. And this last one is due to being in an explicitly illustrated medium here, but I do love how Shiro makes the layers of her petticoat resemble a rose. It's something that I'd love to see in the actual show, but I don't think it'd be doable. S tier easy peasy. 
This is where we're seeing the first instance of needing to separate the art design from the in-show design, so let's focus on Ayn Lee's version first. So, first of all, it shares a ton of the same problems Ruby's Slayer design had. Her hood bundled around her neck looks cumbersome, the grey sleeves don't work as well as an all-black design, if Shiro's design was an enhanced version of Ruby's first look, this is the same for her Volume 2 design. But unfortunately, the added details here end up feeling less like she's growing as a fighter, and more like it's just haphazard shit thrown across the outfit for no reason. I've yelled about the literally 17 plus belts before and they still look goofy, especially the ones on her sleeves doing nothing, and I really think these thigh-high socks look dumb. There's such a small gap between the end of her skirt and the top of the socks that it ends up feeling like they have to constantly put Ruby in wind tunnels to justify getting to show off a tiny amount of her legs here. And despite that, it just breaks her up too much. There are so many starting and stopping points on Ruby that she ends up feeling like one of those old school mix and match puzzle toys. The color palette's a lot less cohesive, and worst of all is that she looks less prepared for traveling, let alone combat. A shorter skirt, her chest is exposed for no reason, her sleeves look like she's doing a crappy Renfair cosplay, her Dumbo socks aren't just already torn, but they look like overall thinner material than her tights did. I hate to say it, but this is the first outright bad design Ruby's gotten. D tier. So the difference here is that they made ruby sleeves this heinous cream color as opposed to the art version's grey. And credit where it's due, this is the color I only put in her concept art. She's the one who breaks away from that to put ruby in grey for her artwork. And I understand why she'd do that because this cream color is awful. Where previously in Ruby's poser model, grey sleeves didn't work because Ruby's skin tone was basically paper white. But with the jump to Maya, they've given her a real skin color now, so grey sleeves actually work better. But they made the shirt this cream color and it goes right back to looking too close to color as her skin tone. I've had so many people mention that they didn't even notice Ruby's shirt had a giant stupid dumbass boob window because the shirt and her skin are so similarly colored. The artwork version of this design is bad, but this cream sleeved version is worse. E tier. And now one would hope that they'd figure out to stop putting Ruby in grey to tan sleeves. Luckily, we get a reprieve, as this now no longer running Chinese exclusive mobile game was centered around volumes 1 through 3 and the girls' designs and adventures back then. Amazing how no one seems to want to engage with the show after they start their poorly planned out quest of walking and sitting around, huh? And this outfit they came up with for Ruby is super duper cute. Clearly the goal was to sexy her up a bit. They've put her in heels, the skirt's quite a bit shorter, and she's got these lace stockings and gloves. I'll be honest, this would be shit for combat, but it looks so dang cute, then I kinda don't care. <laughs> So far, I've really pushed for more all-black outfits for Ruby, but I think it's worth noting how well this black and white design works too. Going stark monochrome like this definitely jives better than the half-assed grays of most of Ruby's looks. I think having this large belt is a much more stylish way to have Ruby's hood connected in the front than just putting an ugly wad of fabric around her. And I really like this idea of having a layered cape. A shorter over-the-shoulder layer on top of the longer one is a very cool look. Though it seems they've actually replaced the hood with just a large collar, which definitely docks some points off the design. Like, come on, she's Red Riding Hood, guys! While not particularly combat appropriate, I can't deny that this look does end up feeling like an aged up Ruby, without also making her half naked like a fan artists will do. She looks mature and very pretty. A tier. Back to the canon looks, and oh goody, they're still giving her these dumbass grey sleeves. I suppose I will mention off the bat that I think this is an improvement over her mantle design. The new hairstyle is cute, though I think having all your characters change their designs so drastically all at once really makes them feel disconnected from their previous volumes. I think this new skirt without a petticoat does look more mature, and these high boots and gauntlets imply Ruby's actually considered how to properly dress for combat finally. But I mean, I don't know how else to say this other than it looks like she's trying too hard. 
Like, it feels like a kid dressing up how they think an adult dresses. It doesn't help that Ruby's the only one that has such an overt fantasy vibe to her design of the entire cast, but beyond all that, it's just so fucking noisy. She's got the corset, and its underlayer, and this mesh vest thing, and her belt that's crooked, and her corset has these dangling straps that do nothing, and there's a bunch of shit on her belt, and her skirt's all layered now, and it's belted together stupidly, and there's this underskirt thing. It's all just noise. It's complexity just to look complex. Does she really need a small sliver of her skirt to be open like this? Does her corset really need these garter belt strap things? Does the belt have to be crooked? Fuck, I'm getting pretty damn tired of her cape always being lopsided like this too. Oh, and they've gone for an ugly lump of fabric around her neck again, not to mention the return of stupid belts accosting her wrists and thighs for no reason. This design is messy, for lack of a better word, and it feels like the showrunners have no idea what made Ruby look so iconic in the first place. If it just had less unnecessary bits and bobs on it, this could have been a B-tiered design, but as it is, it's a C-tier. So, unlike last time, the showrunners are the ones who decided to stray away from the concept art, and also unlike last time, what they did was, instead of change the clothes color, they changed Ruby's skin tone again. She's back to being ashen and pale, and it blows my mind how bad at their jobs RT is. Last time, the gray shirt worked better because they made Ruby's skin tone brighter, meaning the cream-colored shirt they went with matched her skin too much. But for this one, where they actually put her in a gray shirt, they made her skin tone match the shirt again. Fucking- how dumb can this get? D tier. So the less than great Ruby game that came out in 2017 and recently has gotten ported to the Switch as a definitive edition has a couple of different skin options for teams Ruby and Juniper, all references from the show. But they finally decided to put in some original designs for the girls. They've given them power armor. Oh lord. So, I'm gonna try my best here. I don't really like power armor designs in general, I think they tend to all just look the same and are boring, but I'm gonna try to put that bias aside to be objective here. But holy shit, the hard part is trying to ignore how fuck ugly these models look. Look at this. They make people pay money to play this. These character models look fucking heinous and I cannot believe they actually shipped a game this ugly. But putting all that aside for now, man, this design's just pretty uninspired. All the girls' power armor looks take clear inspiration from their current designs for Atlas. Ruby, for example, has like, a little skirt. And that's it. This doesn't look like Ruby. This looks like Master Chief made to shittily resemble Ruby. This looks too clunky to work with her speed. These white details on the edges of her armor just look like the models clipping weirdly through her skin. It's just ugly. This looks so bad. F tier. We've really gotten the full gambit with Ruby here, seeing the good, the bad, and the ugly. The biggest problem seems to be that all of the worst designs for her are just repeating the same problems over and over. Needlessly complex, overly detailed designs, and this weird insistence on making her shirt the exact same color as her skin. It's a real shame that the only people who seem to understand that they had hit the jackpot in terms of Ruby having an iconic, excellent design, and who have tried to emulate that with her new looks, are apparently anyone except those who actually work at Rooster Teeth. If I can only expect Ruby to look good in supplemental material, then why even watch the real show? Finley's artwork for Weiss is very pretty, and I especially like the small details with the trim on the sleeves and around the skirt. Despite having a very similar silhouette to Ruby, she still reads clearly differently with the high collar, angled sleeves, and of course the excellent design choice of this long, distinct ponytail. I really love the minimal yet poignant use of red and black in the look, though I think it's interesting that the problem of putting the character representing white in primarily blue seems to have been an issue from the start. However, I do think keeping it this very pale, icy blue keeps it from becoming too overpowering, like how we'll see in later designs, as does the fact that the design leads the eye to the white elements by emphasizing them, like the sleeves and the torso, doing a similar thing as Ruby's pops of red in her dress, if not quite as successfully. A tier. The 
in-show version of the design ends up blowing out the colors, definitely pushing the white color more, but I also feel that these blue grays end up looking a lot more gray than blue, and it's a bit of a shame to lose what were some really nice shades of blue from the look. There's also definitely less detail in the outfit now, which all makes her look a lot more flat. But they importantly kept those vibrant black and red elements, and those end up really popping out in a great way with her more monotone coloring. I find myself torn on which version of this look I think is better, and honestly, I feel they're both great in different ways. They both excel and fumble in areas, but I don't think I could definitively call one overtly better than the other. A tier. Weiss's snow pea outfit isn't just my favorite Weiss design, it's one of my favorite designs we've seen in the whole show. This stark black and white look with no other colors is so amazing, and I wish we'd see this more often. It keeps her silhouette with a similarly high collar, and fun fact, it actually is a modified version of Ruby's usual dress, because Monty made these outfits overnight and knew that reusing and altering existing models was easier than building something new from the ground up. She looks professional, yet still stylish, and I am in love with these thigh-high boots. This look proves that while putting red and blue on Weiss can work, it's not the only way to have our heiress look great. S tier. I gotta try to be productive here and not just yell about how cute each element of this look is, but that's hard because this design is so fucking good. Shiro also understood how amazing the black and white combo was on Weiss and so has continued that here. However, he also adds these very light purple elements in the blue leggings and this works so well. We never get to see Weiss in purple again after this, but I think this helps push the cold and icy vibe just as well as the blues, but in a fun and different way. Both work, so why limit your options to just blue. This shade of blue on her leggings also rules. Everything else on the look is either extremely pale or straight up black. This being the only saturated element of the design helps the look from feeling too busy while also putting an emphasis on the legs, working in tandem to the huge but short bell sleeves and Shiro makes sure you always look to Weiss's limbs first, a good thing to do for an action manga since those are the parts of the body doing the action. I also want to point out that this shade of forget-me-not blue, while bright, doesn't lose the overall cold vibe of Weiss, like how we end up seeing with the Prussian blue she'll be put in during her stay at Atlas. There's lots of shades of blue, it's easy to make sure you don't put her in a deep, wet blanket shade of it, and Shiro understood that. S tier. And thus we see the beginning of an era I like to call white? Bitch, where? Weiss has lost practically all of the white in her look here, instead being pushed into these mostly dark and medium blues. And I understand the idea. She's in a bad place. She's stuck at home with her bad family, and stripping her of not only her primary color, but also any of her friends' colors is helping to push that idea. And so I think I would have liked this design a lot more if she only wore it while at home. But the problem is, she runs away at the end of Volume 4. She's reunited with her team relatively quickly into Volume 5, and then she's still just stuck in this shitty dress. She's clearly not ready for combat with the thinnest material and shortest skirt we've seen in the show so far, and it really sucks that Yang got to change into combat gear, but Weiss didn't, especially since this outfit was clearly made to not fit Weiss's usual attire. D tier. If there's anything RT are consistent at, it's ruining the colors of their characters. While I don't like Weiss being stuck in these dark blues, they are at least pleasing shades to look at. It's a cute dress, if not particularly well-fitting for Weiss. This in-show version looks like fucking shit. This is gray and more gray, and shitty fuck ugly gray. I've mentioned this before and people have said it's the lighting. Weiss's dress is made to look properly blue, while in the blue tinted schnee manner. But in the natural lighting everywhere else, it reveals that the colors are actually gray. Cool, then they should fucking fix it still. If it only looks right in one fucking location, then do your damn job and alter the model to look right in other lighting conditions. Because this looks hideous. And by the way, the red scarf she wears sometimes just clashes with the rest of the outfit. F tier. 
put it simply, this is a more successful version of what they were trying to do for her atlas design. She looks like a summoner and a princess, and is properly wearing white again. I do think it's a bit busy. There's a lot of layers and colors and patterns and textures all going on here, but it at least all looks like it goes together. And honestly, I think just removing the sheer elements would have helped a lot. Weiss doesn't really need this long skirt thing, and the veil around her ponytail feels especially unnecessary. At a glance, it looks like she's got two ponytails, but they're placed vertically along her head. And again, I wish they'd veer away from these darker blues, as I feel they tend to take precedent when paired with the whites of her design. B tier. White is cold and always yearning. Here we are, one of Weiss's worst designs, and this time it's on purpose and not the result of character modelers not understanding how color theory works. So there's a lot wrong with this look. The skirt not only is a hindrance to the animators, but doesn't even supply a particularly interesting silhouette. Her midsection has been loaded down with a bunch of belts and shit, making it look busy and messy, drawing your eye to her waist for no reason. This royal blue jacket is super loud and doesn't even go that well with the rest of the colors. Her ex excellent iconic ponytail has been put into a fuck ugly braid that they can't even model correctly, and her bangs have been completely altered, making her look like a stranger to herself. It's all ludicrously top heavy with a bunch of bulbous, thick, loudly colored crap all clustered around her shoulders. I think the biggest problem is their insistence on pushing Weiss out of white again. There's a million different colors on her, and with that they've decided to continue to hide her whites under a bunch of blue-gray crap, implying that they didn't actually intend to represent Weiss's loneliness with her colors for volumes 4 through 6, and that instead they just hate letting Weiss wear white. And I think they decided to do this because they didn't want Weiss to look too similar to Jacques or the Aesops. But like... Then why not change them so Weiss can get to look right? Change Jacques's suit to be more gray. Put the Aesops in a similar color palette as CL with this light blue and yellow, allowing Weiss to keep her strong red accents. Since they decided to model everyone in Atlas after Weiss's first look, and then also decided to make them all bad guys, the showrunners forced themselves to make Weiss be the one to go off the deep end in terms of design, and it's befuddling to allow the minor characters to dictate how good you can let one of your main characters look. F tier. So using one of Weiss's worst designs as a basis to work with was probably a bad idea here. Like what can I say, it's the exact same armor they had given Ruby, but with the stupid colors they used for Weiss's atlas design. This skirt thing looks really stupid just stuck onto her like this, and I'm getting none of her character. F tier. So I think when Weiss's designs are good, they're really good. Her Snow Pea and Shiro designs make my life better. So it's a shame then that we've been trapped in crappy design hell for so long with her. I don't know why they just keep insisting on covering her in anything but white. Like, it's such a simple solution. Put her in primarily white. Why aren't you doing that? RT's insistence that their designs need to be overcomplicated is just a bad problem overall, but this has the odd element of also meaning Weiss isn't allowed to actually wear the color she represents, and to be blunt, that's stupid. So I've gushed about Ruby's original design a lot, but now that I really think about it, I think Blake's might be just as good, honestly. She's got a distinct, if less dynamic, silhouette and features another super smart use of color placement. Breaking up the black in her look with the white shirt and shorts helps her body from getting lost in her hair and just looks real nice too. Her leggings very slightly fade to purple right at the end, which help to add a little more visual interest and to keep her legs and shoes from all bleeding together. It's a super distinct and cool design S tier. And thus we begin the true plight of the show, which is nobody knows what to do with Blake. The intruder outfit Monty made for Blake is fine. It's got the same monochrome with a little bit of purple coloring as her first look, and I really like the pop of color on the heels of her shoes. It's a really cute outfit, but it doesn't really feel like Blake, which is a problem she's gonna suffer with for basically the rest of this list. I think Blake's first design was so distinct that even something as similar to it as this still ends up feeling wrong somehow. Like, 
It just feels like Blake wearing different clothes, as opposed to feeling like an evolution of her design. Like if after Volume 1 they got rid of Ruby's cape, or they insisted on putting Weiss in pants with Volume 4 onward. Something feels off with Blake here, and for almost all of her designs. And this off feeling is a problem that seems to affect fan artists too, as I'll often see people struggling to figure out what do I do with Blake when coming up with their own designs. I think I figured out the secret to make this actually look like Blake, but I'll be revealing that a little bit later. For now, I gotta rank this, and like, it's nice but nothing special. B tier. <laughs> Shiro's design for Blake is very similar to her original look. It seems he was also a bit at a loss as to how to alter her iconic design without losing what made her feel accurate. But that's okay, I think he's done a good job capturing her spirit here. He basically just swaps out where the black and white are primarily placed on her. Honestly, there's not too much else to say about this look. Similar to his ruby design, this feels like a perfectly accurate yet slightly adapted design for Blake, allowing her to keep the unique vibe she has while also keeping the black and white coloring. I don't know what else I could ask for. S tier. Black it's a landmark occasion, because this is the first time Rooster Teeth didn't drastically alter the model's colors on their Volume 4 designs for no reason. Unfortunately, that doesn't really fix the main problem here. Similar to how Weiss has been trapped in blue for no reason, Blake has been trapped in white and purple. What were once smartly placed accent colors to help keep her from becoming a big black blob on screen now have become the primary colors as RT for some reason decides to put the focus on this giant dumb jacket. Not only does this not work for her fighting style, not only does it not feel like Blake again, but it doesn't even make sense in-universe because who wears a big stupid coat like this while vacationing on a desert beach island? I like the idea of the gold accents, but they end up just hiding amongst the purples and whites. What a sweaty mess of bad decisions this is. D tier. Black so, Rooster Teeth had the Gigabrain idea to have Blake lose the jacket near the end of Volume 6, and part of that decision was dumb because she was finally out of the hot environment, but was now freezing in the snowy area, but whatever. Because ultimately, this was the greatest thing they did for the whole volume's finale. This design is so good. Just removing the jacket makes this look amazing. Her silhouette is fixed. Her colors are fixed. She looks like Blake. She feels like Blake. And this is how I was able to figure out that secret that I mentioned earlier. The secret of how do I actually make this feel like Blake? For so long, I had been really caught up in these roach coattails that she had in her original design. I thought those were what you needed to evoke the essence of Blake. But I was stupid, so stupid, because the answer was actually ludicrously obvious and easy to do. Just don't give Blake sleeves. Weiss and Ruby have sleeves. Ying's got her arms covered with gloves and gauntlets. Every time Blake actually feels right, it's when they just keep her arms mostly bare. It sounds stupid, but I encourage you to test this theory out yourself and try designing a look for Blake without sleeves. I think it'll help. Oh, and keep her in mostly black. Her hair distinctly stands out from the rest of her body now, so feel free to just let the girl wear black like how they do here. S tier. Easy. Black love I gotta say, after how well these developers had done with their Ruby and Weiss designs, I'm real disappointed with this one they've done for Blake. It's just a lazy, generic ninja outfit. Blake may fight like a ninja, but she's never dressed like one before. She's usually got a distinctly European look to her clothes, probably trying to emulate the French origins of Beauty and the Beast. So to see them totally ignore those elements to just slap big titty ninja girl outfit number six onto her is a real letdown. And it's dumb that they decided to put so much purple on her, missing how great the more minimal use of the accent color had been. After doing so well previously, this is a real shame to see her lose all of her character in this design. I wouldn't be surprised if someone didn't know better that they may not even recognize this as Blake amongst the ocean of other generic black-haired cat girl ninjas you can find in anime and similarly aesthetic games. D tier. I'm gonna say something that might be controversial. I miss the bow. Now, I'm not saying I want Blake to hide her ears again, but I gotta admit that the bow was a more stylish design element and created a more interesting silhouette than the basic bitch cat ears do. 
But I suppose that's a bit of a moot point to bring up here because even slapping a bow on Blake wouldn't have helped this design look good. It's exactly the same as her mantle jacket. Same colors, same cumbersome shape, same problem of hiding the black in her design. Like, they're in the snow now, so it does make sense to give the girl a jacket again. But why would you make it so similar to the shitty, ugly, bad one you just got her out of? Why not make the jacket the black part, eh? And on top of it all, why is the design just so dumb? Why can the jacket zip all the way down to the tips of the coattails? Why are the sleeves unzipped but then belted shut at the wrist? Why are there zippers going all the way down the legs but the one at her neck doesn't go past her collarbone? This is bad, and perhaps the most damning part is the fact that they decided to double down on all the worst elements of Blake's previous look, showing that the showrunners are apparently unwilling to acknowledge their mistakes or learn onto how to improve. F tier. So the changes here are relatively minor among the models that necessitate getting ranked apart from their artwork designs, but I think that they affect the look just enough to warrant these two being different. And those changes are the fact that RT lost all of their brain cells and forgot how to make hair look good, and that they tweaked the black of her outfit. Like, let's not dwell on the hair too long, I think it's been discussed enough by now. It's ugly, and even the tweaked version they made for Volume 8 doesn't even look that good either. A true marvel for a company that has proved that they are absolutely capable of making cute hairstyles in the show regardless of length. But I think the more pressing thing to mention here is the black jumpsuit turning purple. So, using very dark purples or blues, or hell, sometimes even green in place of a straightly monochrome black is an incredibly common thing to see. It allows the artist to put more values into the illustration. I have no problem with the principle of this. Hell, you can even see that they did basically the same thing in Blake's previous design. The thing is that here, I think they pushed it too far. This doesn't read as black, it reads as purple, meaning the only black on her gets to be her butt ugly hair, which actually looks more gray than black. And it's especially frustrating when other characters like Penny and Cinder do get to properly wear black, but the main character representing the color doesn't get to. Quite frankly, the level of quality, or rather lack thereof, that went into Blake's model here tells me that RT doesn't give a shit about making sure their title team look good when they'd much rather spend that time on their favorite side characters instead. F tier. I mean, I'll give them this. They at least actually put her in black here. Stapling the coattails to her waist looks just as stupid and lazy as it had looked with Weiss, and it's still just the exact same armor as the others, stripping the girls of any characterization. But I suppose this looks the most fitting on Blake? Like, don't get me wrong, I still think this looks bad, but at least it's working with her colors better. E tier. Blake has ended up doing significantly better than I expected. I think the problem is that her bad designs are mondo bad, and are the most glaring example of RT refusing to learn from their mistakes. For all the girls, they sort of end up just repeating problems for all eternity. And for Blake, that's these stupid coats and refusing to actually let her wear black. Maybe once they get to the desert, they'll have no choice but to actually make her look good. But if there's anything I've learned over the near decade of watching this show, it's that RT is phenomenal at fucking up even the most basic of things. Ah, uh, the forgotten fourth wheel of the show. So like an eternity ago, Monty was talking about how he came up with Ruby, and he mentioned that at first the only thing he'd thought of was colors. Red, white, and black. He later decided that the team should have four members to properly balance out the combat, and so added yellow to the lineup. Since the very beginning, Yang has been an afterthought and you can tell. Not only does none of her teammates have her yellow color on them, but she doesn't even get the beautifully simplistic treatment the others got. Blake, Ruby, and Weiss all stick to almost exclusively red, white, and black in their designs. Yang, however, isn't even wearing mostly yellow. She's got four different shades of brown and also yellow, black, purple, white, orange, and gold in her design. While the rest of her team stick to no more than three colors, Yang comes straight in with almost ten. Like, this is a nice looking design, but she does not look like she belongs with the others. B tier. 
So, Rooster Teeth's insistence on ignoring Einley's colors has been happening since the very beginning of the show. While the showrunners are apparently resistant to putting Yang in actually yellow clothes, Einley still opted for a light tan as a close alternative, and I think that could work. And it certainly works better than this dank-ass brown they put Yang in for the actual show. Credit where it's due, I really like how well they textured the leather of the jacket. It looks really nice, and it's a shame we'll literally never see that again in the show. But yeah, I hate this muddy brown they decided to stick her in instead. It especially looks bad in her character short, where they don't have that nice looking texture to distract from this poopy shitty brown. Just, ew, C tier. Yang's hunter outfit is the only time so far in show where she's been in primarily yellow. And it looks great! Why don't they do this more? She doesn't have to wear leather, you know? It's not like looking properly ready for combat is a particularly pressing concept they have for any of the other characters. Sticking with mostly black and yellow like this looks amazing. Why haven't they put her in black more often? Or fuck, why don't they put her in white more often either? I'm in love with these boots. The gold accents really pop, this more vibrant purple on her waist does a good job giving her a dynamic palette without feeling too samey, and wowie wow, surprise, you don't have to tie a dumbass bandana on her knee. The design's detailed enough to feel like real and elaborate, but still manages to stay out of the overcomplicated danger zone. This is the look RT should be trying to emulate more for her, and it grinds my gears that they don't. S tier. So, Shiro is really good at capturing and altering the essence of the girl's original designs, and unfortunately that means he's dealing with the sins of the father here. He has simplified the look a bit, ditching the complicated belt and overall having less minute details included, and while I do think the desert camo is a cool idea, it unfortunately continues the problem of Yang not wearing yellow. He also tends to swap back and forth with making the shirt under the camo black or yellow. I think both do look good, but I wish it was more confidently the yellow option, because otherwise she doesn't have any of the color on her ensemble. I do like the design, but I also have to acknowledge that she isn't representing her color properly, so B tier. With their insistence on making Yang wear leather all the time, this is perhaps the one opportunity they'll have to just put Yang in a yellow shirt. And they put her in orange instead. I do like that this outfit is primarily dim. She's going through a rough time while wearing this, and these darker colors are helping to represent that. And notably, she takes the jacket off when she gets back on her feet, making the look significantly brighter to match her mood. It's a really simple design, and that's okay. She's just beaten around the house for now, and because of that, we get to appreciate the little details it's got. Like how the patch on the jacket reveals that it's an old jacket of ties, and how, based on the emblem on the pocket, these pants are some crappy beacon merch that she probably got at orientation or something. This is one of the only outfits in the show that actually goes out of its way to show some character, and so despite the lack of yellow on it, I can't deny that it's doing far more for Yang than most other designs she gets. A tier. And just like that, we're right back to where we started. Yang's new duds are remarkably similar to her original design, which is weird because everyone else changed pretty drastically. It's basically just her first look, but with more black elements and pants. Except this time, even Ein Lee chose to put her in brown over tan, continuing to refuse Yang be allowed to wear her primary color. This design is also loaded down with decisions that had no proper thought put into them. Why give her these gauntlets when they clearly would get in the way if she wanted to use her weapon? Why give her these long coattails when they also clearly don't work with their animation engine? Why is the jacket so... segmented? The ludicrously bright purple bandana slapped on her leg also isn't working as well as the idea had back with her hunter look. Unlike in volume 2, everything in her design is saturated now, meaning the bright purple just fights for attention alongside the orange, yellow, and needlessly noisy torso area. This design is so haphazard that your eyes get overwhelmed and all you end up focusing on is her knee. E tier. So, this is me being a bit petty, a bit of a nitpicker, but I honestly find this fascinating and so couldn't just let it go without mentioning it in this video. At the end of volume 4, Yang puts on her new outfit as she heads out to find her mom. And it's green. Why is it green? 
No one else's outfits turn green while in a forest, so surely it's not the lighting. It's also green both at the docks and on the boat. So why? How? Like, someone had to choose this color. The computer doesn't auto-decide on a color for a model. A decision had to have been made to put her in this awful baby poop green color. And it fascinates me that this happened. Like, making the dark purple not dark enough, I get that. Having it so that Weiss only looks right in one type of lighting, I see how that can happen. But someone had to deliberately choose to put Yang not in brown or tan, but rather this awful green color. Like, how do you mess up that bad? Though, to be fair, Yang is the only one we don't have concept art for, and Ein Lee has provided the idea of putting Yang in green before in her early concept sketches for Volume 1. Maybe Poop Green Yang was actually the planned design, but they changed it for Volumes 5 and 6. I guess we'll never know, and it honestly impresses me. This green version of Yang is one of the most interesting mistakes this company has made in terms of animation and modeling. Anyway, F tier. We're back to the mobile game, and while I think this is certainly better than Blake's design, I also don't think it's quite as strong as Ruby's either. They've decided to go with a futuristic Tron biker vibe, which is certainly unique. RT seems resistant to remembering Ying owns a sick nasty motorcycle, so it's cool to have that element of her character get represented here. I guess the problem is that it doesn't really match how Yang usually looks. Like, this feels like Yang's wearing a costume. I do like it, though. It's certainly a more interesting way to have her dress than to just keep slapping leather shit onto her. And they've even nailed the colors, having her primarily wearing yellow, black, and purple. It's not particularly accurate. But I wish it was, because it's a lot more interesting than what would be accurate. So, A tier. I think this might be the best Yang's looked for the canon show since Volume 2. It's got way less weirdly piecemeal feeling elements to the look as her previous outfits did. She's back to wearing primarily tan, which still isn't yellow, but it's trying at least. It helps that the black elements are a lot smarter placed and are real dark too, so the gold elements end up popping out in a really nice way. I'm glad that they've toned it back on the orange, and I like that the bomber jacket is a red-brown, meaning she's got some color representing her sister on her. Her thigh being fashionably exposed in an environment where they have to waste their life-saving aura on being warm rather than just wearing warm clothes ticks me off. But overall, I think the design's nice. A tier. Unfortunately, color variation strikes again and ruins it, and to be fair, again, this is actually accurate coloring as depicted by the concept art. Ein Lee is the one who is deviating from her concept illustrations for the promo images again, ignoring the possibility of the color tan here to decide to put her in this poopy sand color instead. It's annoying that the few times RT refuses to deviate from the concept art are also the times where Ein Lee realizes that changing the colors a bit would look significantly better. However, Rooster teeth are to blame for Yang's highlighter yellow arm and gauntlet totally clashing with the rest of the look. Ein Lee's version had them match the nice golds of the rest of the design, but RT decided to have those suckers stand out like giant goofy looking thumbs. After seeing Ein Lee's artwork of this design, this in-show result is so disappointing. C tier. Back at it again with the ugly power armor, still just the exact same shit with a different color, lacking any character. Putting the jacket on her looks less stupid than the other girl's accessories, but it does still look real dumb. And she's mostly wearing black, F tier. From the very beginning, Yang has kinda disappointed me. In a world that started out with such amazing, simplistic use of color, Yang has always felt like she just shouldn't be here. And as the years continue, they just keep doing the same exact thing with her over and over. And I gotta say, Yang's boring. There's never anything exciting or interesting to her designs. They're always just poopy leather with some black shit. I've never been less stimulated by a collection of designs before. So here's a tier list with all the girls all together, and also here's a handful of fun facts about the ranking. If you average out all their scores, each girl individually overall averages to a C tier. Averaging out the scores by collection, so like all the volume 1 designs together, all the volume 2 designs together, etc., you get this. 
Shiro in Volume 1's designs are the best of the bunch, while the Grim Eclipse power armor obviously takes up the rear. Blake has had the most S tiers. Weiss has had the most F tiers. Ying has had the least S tiers. Ruby has had the least F tiers. If we are considering a D ranking the threshold into overtly bad designs, then each of the girls' first bad designs happened with volumes 4 through 6. If we choose to disregard supplemental material and the limited use of the volume 2 outfits, then Weiss and Yang have never had an S ranked design in the show. By those same standards, Ruby is the only one not to have an F ranked design. The outsourced designs consistently rank higher than those made in-house since Volume 4, or in other words, other people have been making better designs for the girls than the actual showrunners for about six years. Only one design has made it into the S tier since Monty passed away. It had three and a half episodes of screen time. And again, this is all just my opinion. You may think Ruby's original design is boring, and hell, you may think that this looks good for some reason, but I don't think I'm particularly off base here. I'm not the final authority on character designs, but my degree in studio arts does mean that I at least know what I'm talking about here. We are entering the beginning stages of Ruby finally coming to an end. I've heard the idea that the plan is 12 total volumes, which would mean at least four more years of waiting for Ruby to just finish already. Honestly, I think I'd rather it just be 10 total volumes. The showrunners clearly don't even like making this show, so why drag it out anymore? Why waste your own time working on a show you don't care about, and waste our time watching a show you half-ass for four more years? Heaven forbid you just pass your directorial responsibilities to someone who actually gives a shit and you just move on to working on something you really care about. But if we are locked in for a 12 volume show, then I hope that means the designs from not only the actual series, but also for any more supplemental material that comes out, could perhaps strive to get back up into these better ranking slots. Much like the fights of the show, the quality of the character designs have been trending downward since the loss of Monty and the jump to Maya, and that really sucks, cause like, if the show's writing, directing, and just fucking overall story are going to be as bad as it is, you could at least make the girls look nice. Really nothing else to say here, it's not like RT watches my shit, and it's not like they'd even attempt to improve the show anyway if they did. So hopefully more fans come up with their own designs for Team Ruby, cause there's a decent chance it'll look better than whatever Rooster Teeth craps out next. Sorry, just not used to the new hair yet. Is it... Bad? No, no, it's good. Cause it's, bitch, is you blind? So you chose a very practical outfit for this series. Yeah, I wanted to um, be fun, safe, and visible. Oh my god, I love your skirt. Where did you get it? Uh, it was my mom's in the eighties. <gasps> Vintage. So adorable. Thanks. That is the ugliest effing skirt I've ever seen. 